lot of you know perfectly well who this guy is. I just want to share the personal story about Chad. When I first met him, you, by the way, you might not uh, remember that. We were sitting in one of the cafes and he approached to our group and said, uh, how are you guys? Do you enjoy your time? And he was dressed casually, just like today. And I was like, who the hell is this guy? Why is he asking me around? How is my day? And they were like, shh, shh he's one of the founders of this place. I was like, oh, oh, oops. <laughs> Sorry for not knowing you back then. But I guess this story shows how, many, how much this person values the projects he is included in. Like he is not sitting somewhere on the top, like I'm found, founder of this place. I am looking uh, top down on all of you guys. He approaching people, he is asking, how are you? Is anything can be improved? Um, I guess that says a lot of you as a person, that says a lot of you how you approach your projects, how you organize them. Um, from communicating with you, I saw that you, um, you only do that uh, in what you truly believe. So thank you for that. That was the short introduction and we'll talk uh, with Chad more about his experience, his attitude to work, his projects, his plans. Uh, please prepare questions because actually we will have only short introduction. I have a few questions to Chad and then we'll pa pass the mic to you. So yeah, prepare the questions to him. Um, you can sit down or you want to stand. Um, so my first question to Chad was, um, well, and, al and also back then when he was approaching our group, it was like 2012 or 13. And they said, he's actually a Greek guy who's making business here in Lviv. He decided to stay in Lviv. And back then it was for me weird, like why a person from Europe came to Lviv? Now this perception in my head changed. But my first question will be, um, why did you come to Lviv? Why did you decide to stay? Why restaurant business? Hey everyone, thank you for coming. Nice to see you here. Who wants to know Ukrainian? Put my hand up. I want to practice my Ukrainian. We speak English, we speak English, no problem. Uh, why I came to Ukraine and what since when I came, right? So, uh, I came in 2009 actually. It was winter, it was November, I guess. And it was the season of uh, quarantine when everyone had masks. So it was not really a good uh, timing, as I guess. So since I came, it was um, hard and um, cold. But uh, we came w with a program to have a like internship, internet work. Uh, I was working with my profession like maybe half a year, practicing Ukrainian language speak it and uh, learn how to communicate. And what is your mindful question? To raise it, but yes. Uh, my profession was a ch child, uh, pedi pediatric, a children doctor. Uh, it was a bit boring because I had to work as a night shift and it was uh, a bit hard for me. So yes, you mentioned that you mentioned that you practiced for half a year your profession. It was internship. But what happened next? Why restaurants? How did you find it? So what happened next is I continue practicing, but I didn't like it. So I wanted to quit my job according to the condition of low uh, quality of medicine and uh, the quality of the tablet <laughs> that we are gathering money today for it. Uh, so I have kind of view that if you don't like the thing you are doing, don't keep doing it. Stop it. Even if it's six, seven years in your life, you need to change it or you will be ending up in not the good direction. So I had to quit my job uh, and uh, I thought maybe as soon as I'm here, I still have a contract so I can join another university. So I joined uh, Politech. <laughs> Uh, it was uh, Cardinal, totally ancient. Uh, so I, I want to speak Ukrainian so much. I'm sorry. 
because I was even thinking how to do it in Ukraine, you know, it's now like this. Anyway, so I joined Politech and uh, went to design. Uh, I had a young group because I was, I think, 26, 27, and they were like 2018 maybe. Like, I was like feeling myself like uh, Starshi Patko, you know? <laughs> So I was like, yeah, yeah, hey, we have going to Pala, we have Tarshi course. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good. Uh, so it was hard first year, it was very funny actually, it was very friendly. I was like uh, starasta after Natalia. I had to take care of everyone, everybody is getting drunk and coming to with Perhar Napare. So it was nice. Um, second year also I had to attend the university, but it was also kind of expensive thing that to study in Ukraine actually. You need to pay more like 3,000, 4,000 euro each year just to have a resident and stay and study. So I was thinking I'm spending too much money on uh, Pare and in the end I will have a piece of A4 diploma and I will put it on my wall and I will be looking for a job and uh, work you out. I was like, uh, maybe I'm stand, spending again time so I'm keep going, maybe I will open. So I joined one community with the bars and cafe. I got some inspiration and yeah, yeah. So we had to join first bar. We made the first community and uh, we had to communicate more with people, uh, make um, some coffee, make some cocktails and it was nice. Then we joined the other team. I'm not mentioning any places so we don't make any reclama. Uh, second place also, second team, it was nice. More experience, more light life. Then I joined uh, Wizard. Everybody know Wizard? Yeah. Uh, joined Wizard in 2010. It was nice. I saw Olya by mistake. She needed some help with the design or something. We stayed till 5 a.m. doing some the issues and festival. It was nice. It was first experience with a big community in Lviv. Then we made the cafe, then some parties, and it start to happen that I, I like it you know start making positive vibes for people so everybody's coming yeah when's the next party let's do something uh, let's dance uh, it was nice so i felt like i'm doing something with a good vibes you know when you this is what what is most motivating me here um i also wanted to ask you why didn't you back to uh, go back to Bre uh, greece why <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> Why did you decide to stay uh, here in Lviv? Because you, after finishing the, you, not finish after quitting university, you could have just go back there. What kept you here? What kept me here the most actually is the people. Uh, the way how people uh, friend here, it's quite important actually. Because when you live, when you're 21 for example, I came here when I was 21, now I'm 30. Dirty. <laughs> so when I came, when 21, when you're building your friendship, actually, when you build it from 21, let's say to 25 or 26, it's like, uh, for me, it's like reliable, reliable friends. Uh, you can build uh, true friends. It's not like uh, college or like Mjudno Hrubnik or Mjudno Klasnik, you know, like we see them once per year and hey. It's like new true friends and you feel like you can reliable on them. So this is important. Um, building uh, something you want to aim in life, like building an empire. So you're building an emotion of empire, you know? This is the thing, not like, can you say, by the jet or blah, blah, blah. You're just building something small in a small young city. And Lviv is pretty uh, comfortable city, actually. It's, for me, it's even the comfortable city in all Europe. Like condition, people, uh, smallest one, easy to rehabilitate. Um, uh, your recent projects, like Table and Night Ambassadors, uh, are really um, like they are always overbooked. Uh, the topic of today's uh, meeting is community. So my question is, how do you um, how do you manage to build the event of such type that it's always overbooked? It's always uh, wanted by people. How do you create this? sense of identity for people who coming there. Uh, yeah, let's stop there and then ask another question about... So how do you... What are the recipes for 
I think the magnetic event actually is um, it's about building it, correct? This is, I think, the main thing. So when you when you need to build a community, first of all, you need to share it with people. Because community is built with the amount of people. It's not a per person or second. Or like. It's not a group. It's a community. It's a cult. So you need to give it kind of, uh, not religion, but a theme. So people can, uh, first of all, love it, then uh, believe in it. So you're like building like an icon. Uh, Lviv is small. People in Lviv, when they hang out, they see each other almost each weekend, or like in Lesso Creek, or like City Center, you know, and the same faces every time. So what you need to do is always, we call it when, what you need to do is always pick different locations so people hang out, you know, like quest, go there, go there, oh nice, go there, also nice, oh, oh. you're not too awesome. <laughs> so you feel like you need to be the person who is hanging out, you always imagine yourself where you want to go. So this is, and second thing is the team, you never build it by your own, you need the real team. So we always uh, look for like creative people, creative mornings. And we always have kind of um, vibes that people really want to help because you are doing something to make people happy. You are not making them depressed. And the third thing, except the team, is the... Uh, how to explain it in English? Um, your uh, mood, nastri. Uh, yes, you need to have nastri. Uh, because without this, you will not do anything with the heart. You know, you go, ah, okay, let's do it. So this is the main three things we need to do in community. Why they are always booked? Because we are always trying to um, uh, run from place to place so the police don't catch us. <laughs> and it's always happening and we always have problems, but we always have police even in our parties in uh, normal uniform. <laughs> so sometimes I see them, I have to You know, like something like this. Yeah, so everything is okay. And um, how to make sure that, um, well, you have one event, there is a hype, like, oh, new event in Lviv. Uh, you have second event. The hype is somewhere in the middle. How do you sustain this level of hype, this level of interest? What do you think the, um, the, uh, the recipe for a solid community? How the community organizes itself? Um, maybe there are some more things about, apart of, uh, from these three things that you mentioned. Uh, again, please, I'm still sleeping. <laughs> um, how can community su sustain itself and not fall apart after a few events? Narada. What do you mean? Uh, meetings, always, uh, like brainstorm, come here. No, I mean not team, but community of those people who are coming to the events. Ah, how to gather them, you mean? Sorry? How to keep... Yeah, how, to, how to keep them together, how to, to keep the community solid. Uh, you need to make it in actually comfortable conditions, so you don't bring it to an uh, uncomfortable place or like uncomfortable bar. It's all start from the from the entrance. When you put uh, happy face at the entrance, you will leave with happy face. When you put face like this at the entrance, nobody well, we are going to. So you always need to push really um, ambience people and young people to the entrance, welcome them then uh, make some kind of entertainment, always change the design of the theme of the party, put new element of decoration, put always disco ball, because it's happy mood, you know, people like it, it's, I want disco ball, <laughs> you know, it's the mood, it's the moment when you shake your shoulders. And um, uh, good quality of uh, how, you, how everything looks like, the bar, the quality of wine, like, don't put shmardiaka or something like this, please. <laughs> Don't do this. If you are organizing any event, put an extra in the alcohol because everybody will be thankful for you. Um, I think we are ready to pass the mic to our audience. We don't want to steal your time because Chad wanted to talk to you actually, not to me. Uh, so um, if anybody have questions, I'll run to you with microphone. Questions? Якщо хтось, якщо хтось стидається, ви можете питатись на українській. Тепер це можливо спиняти на українську мову, якщо що. А 
Буде було перше, так? Uh, hi, my name is Zoriana. I have a question. Uh, how did you manage through all this year not to maybe fall down or to give up and continue to do things that you are doing? And if maybe you had a moment when you wanted to give up, but you didn't, how have you overcome this moment? Uh, it's a hard question. You killed me. Uh, how, I did, uh, how I ended up keep going, it's a kind of a long philosophy, I think. Because uh, the things, when people, you, you, you see the feedback from the people that uh, when they always ask you, it was good, or like, when is the next party? This is the kind of motivation. But when you see someone is not asking anything, you feel like, what the fuck I just did? So I think this is what my most thing, uh, is the feedback, the vibes from the people. Second is the, it's, uh, it's your... Uh, uh, the will for having something in your life so you need to build something and aim for it and go for it when you achieve it you feel like ah I need some something more so you you can really get addicted to this like you need uh, yes more more it's like adrenaline in life actually but more with emotion thank you uh, there was another question uh -huh. can you <laughs> hi Hello. I'm Mariana. Uh, okay. My question is very right. easy. <laughs> what is your favorite Ukrainian food? And what keeps your mood better? <laughs> Не холодец, а ну, голубці, голуби, голуб, голубці, голубці, голубці. <laughs> голубці. Е, вони схожі на наші грецькі, бо ми їх робимо з виноград, і вони все не більше йдуть насичені з рисом, з м'ясом, і вони трошки схожі. Але після голубці дуже тяжко ходити. Another question was from Mariana, um, how do you keep your mood up? Uh, always try to take one hour off during the daytime. Like, take one hour off, either have a glass of wine or have a joint. <laughs> um, some more questions? Yes. Thank you for being here. My name is Lisa. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask you that. Is I think it's quite a hard question. So you're quite a famous uh, guy in Lviv and everybody knows you and um, you have a lot of friends, but it's really difficult when you have uh, a lot of people at your parties and more people are coming, but they didn't register beforehand and they're asking you like, oh, Chad, I know you. Can we please, like, we have just like two of us. So uh, how do you say no to people that you know? <laughs> this is my weak point. <laughs> I cannot say no, but I uh, lately I start to learn how to say no, but to uh, mainstream things, not to my friends. Uh, we always have this, like uh, this friend who think like he's too friend to register, you know, like, he's too cool, or he's too friend to come on time. Oh, Chad, I forgot, I'm here. Oh, okay, should I, do, should I close the door? No, it's the door is always open, so. If it's good, if it's a couple of extra friends, but we always have this, never end. And uh, yeah, in Lviv it's always famous that people come lately, not on time. So this is the main thing, because it's a slow city, you know, <laughs> slow life. <laughs> come on time! I want to expand the question about no and ask you more generally. How do you say no to some project? Like you have an idea, but then you decided, no, I don't want to do this. Do you have some decision-making system for that? Uh, my alarm, sorry. <laughs> now, now I'm awake, officially. <laughs> Actually, this is the first one. I woke up after half an hour. So I need someone to talk to me. Hey, wake up. Okay, okay, five more minutes. Hey, wake up. Okay, okay. Um, 
One more question, what was the... Uh, uh, how do you say no to, to um, projects, not only to people, but to projects? How do you decide whether you want to do this project or not? Uh, we always accept actually uh, kind of offers, offers from people. We always have this, uh, like, hey Chad, uh, I have an idea, come. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, at, the, at the moment of the party when they speak chess, you know, like, so can I speak to you five minutes, five minutes, not more, okay, I'm listening. Uh, I have this, uh, I found this, blah, 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 let's do this. Yeah, yeah, nice, but let's speak maybe on Monday on uh, Swiss Hollow, you know, like, uh, no, no, it's, uh, it's an important idea. I just read it in the news, oh, okay. So there is always things like this, like small people, and there is a big amount of people who really want to do something. So I think you always need to listen to people, because this is important. When you listen to the person, you feel like you are pitching the idea with them at the same time, so, because we don't, it's, it's better even to pitch it at the same moment. Like, you have an idea, yeah, let's discuss it directly. Mm -hmm. Seem like good idea, positive idea, profitable idea, let's do it. So we always collaborate. It's uh, important to cooperate with people, actually. It's better to friend and make friends here than to leave and say, no, no, you are do your own project, we do your our own project, because it's quite famous, this Halisk mentality, you know, like, Wysoki Zamok, my tam żywomo zwerchu, te okremo. Please, don't do this. Open this barrier, because it's important. When you communicate with people, when you, co when you collaborate, you grow. You don't collaborate, you never grow. Ego. So basically, you never say no, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> Except right? to religion and uh, uh, and religiini, uh, as I say, politician, rich, and and the blue list. Uh huh. Right. Um, more questions? Yeah. Hi, my name is Natalia. Hello. I'm wondering to know what was your expectation and fail when you organized the first project. Uh, first, actually, the first time when we organized, but I thought no, they will come. <laughs> but uh, it was uh, very funny because um, the first huge party actually we made, uh, not the concert, the party, I, let's say party like an event, right? Because once we made with the wizard an event in uh, Robert Domso with uh, Lana Musco. We invited a punk Italian uh, band. Uh, they were playing almost naked in Robert the So it was a kind of nice experience in 2010. Uh, the first part we made it was made with uh, our friends in uh, Zawodski. We made the first Kanok, and uh, it was like 300 person coming with no Facebook event. Like just by phone call. Hello, oh, yeah, where well, there is a nice uh, backyard camp, we will have some of this. And we had some help with our friends in decoration. We were screwing everything by our hands, like uh, building a tiny bar and making nice music and inviting friends to play over. So it was really nice. It was the first two parties. It was the most beautiful two parties ever because it was like the first thing, you know, 200, 300 people. Then the third party came, 800 people, we said, fuck. Here it, it started to get out from hands, from control, actually. So 400 people, it's too much. 300 is pretty nice, you know, nice ambience. 800 in Lviv in such a place like this, it's hard, actually. Um, the part of the question was about fails. So the fail was about too much people, right? Yes. Were yes. there any more fails? Uh, there is always fails actually. Without fails, it, the party is not party. Tell us more. Yeah, like there is many always fuck up. For example, like uh, like recently we had uh, three nights in a row in four different museums. Actually, we made daytime actually because we couldn't make it even. It was with Mikola. Thank you, Mikola. Uh, so once we had a party in the museum, I will not say any 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 specific museum, but in a museum the music was pretty loud, you know. The Stuka Turka was sipping. Uh, and there is one old plafond. Everybody know what is a plafond, right? Yeah. So the plafond fucking explode. <laughs> and there was two directors sitting like this, waiting for the moment that something would happen, you know? Like they are old and they are on shift till 4 a.m. So I was sitting with them, you know, like, Nala had a situation, let's drink something. No, no, we don't drink, we are at work, okay. Maybe wine? No, 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 water, okay. You need something then. Then suddenly, the one director went out, he said, go! 
plafond to the wolves. It's like the victory, he made something, you know, like, yes, something, finally, <laughs> now we fuck you over. Hey, chill, chill, then uh, what happened? Plafon, I thought it's a vase, but I don't think it's a plafon. But she asked you, it's a plafon. I thought it's a fucking expensive vase, 200 years old. Plafon, oh, fuck. No, for a pal in a hroshi. I was running, what happened, what happened? Some uh, small glass, white glass. Okay, glass? No, no, plafon from the... Oh, okay, plafon, hey, it's 200 years old. What's it film towards Nimale, blah, blah, blah. It's a uh, retro, okay, we will fix it, we will find the phone, don't panic. No, it's bad, it's bad, okay, it's bad, I understand, what will happen now? More bad, if you'll say more bad? Always take it easy, guys. Even if you are the organizer and you're like this, take it easy, chill. Okay, happened, broke, we will fix it, we will play it, nothing will happen. No, no, please, the general director will know and he will kick me out for more, because he was the responsible for this, but we were the responsible. So I told them, tomorrow we'll fix it, tomorrow is Subota, we will go and find nice antique, and I know one guy in Leso Krinki. <laughs> tomorrow at 12 I will find you plafon. No way man, it's a uh, historicity plafon with zirka and blah blah blah, <laughs> it's like 200 years old, yeah, all the music, yeah, okay, tomorrow. Tomorrow at Saturday, I called him at 11, let's go? Yeah, I just woke up, okay, let's go, plafon, 200 years old. <laughs> Went to Leso Krinki with my friend, calling my friend, hello, Puskai Sabudas. He went, opened the, what happened? Yeah, yesterday we had a party, we need plafon. Come, come, show me your plafons. Hey, I have, like this. Yes, it's the same, yes. How much? He told me in the night, maybe it's 1,000 euro and uh, during the night. How much it cost? Uh, I will give you for 300. It's the same plafon, fucking same plafon. How much you have? 16. <laughs> give me two. Take two, really, it's a true story. Take two, thank you. 100 years old. <laughs> Thank you for a funny story uh, about problem solving and risk management. There is the question, right? Uh, hello, my hello. name is Irina. Uh, I heard you are from Greece and for me it is interesting uh, which difference uh, between Ukrainians and Greece people have you noticed uh, during your stay here and also for me it's interesting what was hard uh, in your communication with Ukrainians after you came here from Greece and so on. Uh, it's a multicultural story. Actually, uh, being from Greece or being from Ukraine, this is all uh, road uh, stuff. This is all emergency. I think we are all the same because we look the same. We have eyes, we have mouth, we have nose, everything is okay. Being nationality is kind of, I think, traditional. Why I like Lviv most? Because it's more traditional city actually than other cities in Europe. In Europe, nobody gives a fuck. Like Easter, Christmas, okay, yeah, put some nice decoration, look like nice. But here, people stop everything and go to Babulia and uh, <laughs> Mama, the Babsi, have a chero. And this is pretty nice actually. This is why I like Lviv because it's a bit similar to Greece. And I have a multicultural family actually. I have, uh, like, my mother is a kind of German Lebanese now and she's living in sweden so i have mm, all my uncles i have seven uncles because greek families are big always you need to make too much children so you can enjoy the life because you have nice sea so i have seven uncles and i have two aunts and i have 24 cousins so imagine now like, it's a big family you know um, and, but I'm the oldest, so I had to be a good example of my family, but I was always the bad boy, you know, like, ah, uh, forget it. So I was always bad in my childhood, then I entered the university and I know I had, uh, it's my chance to be a good boy. Uh, difference between Greece and the Ukraine, it's only the climate. <laughs> only the climate, because first time I see zero, my, and minus 32, it was in Ukraine, that I stayed home two weeks. And I had pichka, and I was fucking scared to blow it up, you know, like, first time. I, once I was like, it was too hot, and then, boom, fuck me, I'm dying tonight, or what? So it was, yeah, hard. And um, the gray climate, actually, when I also first came to Ukraine, we were landing almost 20 minutes, you know? The pilot was trying and trying and trying and trying. I googled where is Lviv. I googled how it looked like. like Hi, my name is Christina. Like Tell this. us, please, uh, what are your future goals? What are you going to do? Stay here in Lviv or maybe other cities? Lviv, uh, Odessa, Kiev. Have you got ideas or, or still not? Thank you. 
Yeah, Nicole and this is really weird. I will never uh, cheat on Lviv actually because Lviv is the my I can Yaksho Mojna Skazat should say my yeri de Mista. Pisla. Pisla was the shine. So the compliments are Pravda and Aspadi and Aspika made it to comfort no and I feel really comfortable here. So the uh, the moment I came here I felt like it's not hard to live here actually. You can repeat uh Pohodo uh repeat uh Kludinayut oh Pohodo I terpite, jak ty nejesz, kolej ludy nejesz mi pochodu. Zamochala. So, things like this is like kind of classic, you know, ah, Lviv, what, what you do? You go to Kiev, we don't have time, pochoda, go work. Here, like, ah, it's dosh pada, jest lewa, ja nie mogę pite, dawaj na zawsze. As we need to go to work, work, please. Yeah, 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 na zawsze. So, yeah, like, it's important thing. The question, the question was about your future plans, also. Yeah, oh, by the way, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, one second. Uh, I saw on Instagram about your project City Makers. Maybe you could tell us more about that, because I'm really interested. I didn't understand what was it. Uh, I will not say too much details. It's like kind of rumors. It's not even, uh, it's kind of a team, actually. It's not a project. It's a team who's building a project and making kind of conception for a nice a huge space in the city center. Uh, I will not say where, don't ask, no hint. Uh, that it will include everything from your comfort zone to your working uh, zone. Let's say like spa, gym, swimming pool, uh, networking, party events and uh, rooftop. So we hope everything will be okay and we hope the idea will uh, take Chlopete investor and we hope everything will be okay because soon we will have pitching and if, the, if everything will be okay and uh, we will make announcement together a big team to uh, manage this project. Thank you. Yeah, hi, <coughs> my name is Mariana and I work for Lviv Tourism Board so I have related to this field a question. Um, like now people, especially young people, when they travel, they want to feel the local community. And um, unfortunately for the tourists, mostly what is available and what they see are the clubs we wouldn't really like them to get to know. <laughs> uh, so the question is, like I even asked my colleagues to contact you to provide us more information on your <laughs> events. So are you ready to accept tourists, uh, guests of the city to your community to visit your events? and want it to have a bad or good influence on, on their quality? Good question. Uh, finishing my question about my future plans, dreaming to open my own zone that to work 24 hours without complaining from police and babulia. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about uh, answering your question, uh, yes, we always actually have foreigners, like maybe 10% for sure on each party. Either they are like real foreigners or like foreigners from outside uh, Lviv, let's say, not local, Ukrainian. Uh, this is an important question, why? Because uh, we, we have this problem actually. We don't have a place to go during the night with our friends who's coming from other cities or like other countries. So you feel sometimes, even me, shy to take them somewhere except uh, Malevich and uh, I will not say names and fashion, and, uh, you know where. So we have this kind of problem that uh, clubs need to be uh, in our life actually because club is not doesn't mean like Alcatraz or like uh, club or like house. Club can be the zona where you feel yourself free. You feel yourself like uh, no nobody is watching you. You feel yourself like you need to go wild sometimes because we always sit like this, you know, like premas pena yemo velko livo nis pravo i tak treba. But in clubs, sometimes when there is a um, loud music, you feel yourself like more free. You feel like you need to s shake it a bit, you know, like feel the vibes and do this. Why not? Because you never do this at work. And you feel like communicating with people because you really need to rest after your work. So building a club, it's kind of a goal for me in Lviv to build it someday and uh, make it in a good quality that we don't allow uh, fascists and uh, strange people inside. 
just we always try actually to gather this in our uh, parties and events and even on table that we filter people sometimes not we filter them that you are not allowed you're allowed we gather the people in uh, spin interest like you know like this is important so when you mix kind of people who would like to gather some new idea or like they have the same energy it's way much easier than to gather someone from the east and from the west and shake hands no we can uh, thank you. I saw uh, we, we are running out of time, but I saw two hands, uh, and I see the third hand. So, Chad, could you accept Chester. three Chester. more questions, but quickly? Please, right? please. Okay. So, first question. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. My name okay. is Afzal. I am from Pakistan. Nice. And currently, I am here in Lviv, the city of charming people. Nice. And I have a question. Can you suggest me some tips how I can learn Ukrainian firstly? I am crazy about it <laughs> because how you learn it? Can you suggest me some tips? Because I am falling in love with Lviv, so I want to learn it. Find, a, find a girlfriend. She will kick your ass. <laughs> a lot of people suggest me, but I am not in a relationship and relationship is not for me. I don't want it. <laughs> so suggest me other tips. <laughs> okay, tender man. Tender, uh, but the really important thing go to there is many nice beautiful uh, how to say decision in English I even forgot my English thank you for living here <laughs> um, you need to go to in intention maybe uh, Ukrainian courses they are like three months or like two months and you can even learn the basic things because first first thing you need to le read it it's important when you read it you start to communicate even with yourself and you learn it easier even. So it's double, yeah. And uh, always hang out with the Ukrainian uh, group who don't speak English. I used to do it always. Oh, yeah, yeah. 2009, 2010, hanging out, drinking beer. Yeah. Everything comes easy when you drink one beer, man. Everything is nice. Glass of wine or beer, yeah, you start communicating. Exactly. Thank you. But respect the people here because they need it. When you respect the person, they respect you back. This is the main thing, actually. Chad, Sam, Chad hello. Hi. Uh, can you give three tips of how to speak with police? Yeah. <laughs> and also, do you plan to like writing a book about the philosophy of policy making or something like this? Thank you. Uh, I will speak about the second uh, part of the question. Uh, the book is, uh, I don't think I have the uh, authority to write a book. I'm still too young for this. Maybe someday in the future I will write my 10 years in Ukraine. But it will be with the short stories because I always had a problem with my accent that people understand me in a different way or totally different world and I got almost in a trouble. Mm -hmm. So this is an important thing. And the um, first question is how to speak with police. Uh, speaking with police, you always have to play nice and play stupid. Main things. When they count, Dobri Dan, Dobri Dan, Shoo Stalin, Stipa, Shoo, 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 No problem, no, no, uh, yeah, we play party till, uh, one, it's all o'clock, uh, one o'clock, yeah, till ten, but the DJ who came from abroad, he got too excited and he had one more pe uh, song, you know, okay, but it's almost twelve, yeah, you know, and also this snappy, snappy, you know, they always sing it. This always um, not re re not really helpful. So you need to go through many stuff. First of all, make dozen for sure. So stachowate to be ensure that everything is okay. Make make uh, permission from the miskarata. Say that you are going to make it loud. Say that you want to make it till eleven and till twelve. But somehow make it by the con. Second, go to police and make the that you are also making a loud talk. But now you can make it by a phone call. Hello? Yeah, next mm -hmm. Third thing, uh, um, and, uh, sometimes I do it actually, or if it's uh, too uh, crowded with people, I plant A4 and I say like, uh, Administratia, night ambassadors. <laughs> Uh, event. So we apologize that we are going to be loud in this kind of and somehow they don't call police actually. It, sometimes it works. And uh, always promise police that you will turn the music at 12.00. This is an important thing because if they will come back you have to, you have to write administrative straf. And this end up in not happy face. Thanks for tips. 
And the last question. Okay. I'll be standing there. Uh, hi, my name is Vlad. Uh, nice to meet you, Chad. Nice to meet you. Too. Kalimera, Tikanis. Kalimera, I see uh, that's basically it, I can say in, in Greek, but I do love your country a lot and I respect that you learn English and you learn Ukrainian and Thank you want to speak Ukrainian, it, it means a lot, I admire that. Uh, well, I spent my last five vacations in Greek and I know you people, you like to party and it's understandable why your parties are so successful here. But let's talk about a little bit more important things like food. Just raise your hand who like to eat. I do like to eat a lot, so for that matter, <coughs> And I, I have to say that I enjoy the Greek cuisine. Have you ever thought about like owning the like true, real, real gangsta, uh, let's say like that, uh, Greek restaurant here in Lviv and own it and make it successful, like not like being open and closed after like three and successful months in a row, something like that. Yeah, I think Greek uh, cuisine can be nice here actually because it doesn't, doesn't even exist for me. It used to exist from my friend. I used always to go to him. It, was to say Acropolis, it was in the Renok Square. It was a tiny cafe with a pita and tzatziki and arabasalata. So it's a, a huge cuisine. In Greece, we have actually big cuisines. I don't know, in, because of the climate, there is always vegetables and fruits and uh, a lot of uh, big... When I came here, I went to Chirantano and I ordered pizza. And the girl, she was putting... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, why you took it back? This is mine, like you already put it in my plate somehow. No, 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 it's one gram more. Okay, put one gram more. No, it's always technician. So the point is, we have small portion here in Ukraine, a little bit, but now it's bigger. But in Greece, it's more bigger because when friends, my friends went, he ordered salad and this and this. When they brought the salad, it's like a bowl. <laughs> eat. But we order for everyone salad. Yeah, it's, uh, you eat too much here. That's why, because it's always fresh and the food will go. So opening a Greek restaurant, I think going national, na nationally, I think it's kind of risky. You know, when you open it more like um, uh, European style, it's more easier for people to take it because here for people like Europe is pasta, lasagna, and pizza. This is the main thing. But I think one day we will, we will open a small bootka, you know, with the... Yes, and gyros and pitas. They are always fast food. And Dorechi, we don't have a culture of sweet food, cream, melon, and pizza. Because we always need this, because we are always running and you cannot sit and eat all the time. You need to grab something and continue working. So this, we have kind of issue with this in Lviv, especially in city center. Thank you very much. Thank you for all your questions. Thank you, Chad, for sharing. Thank you. Um, we have a small gift for you uh, for doing this talk. Um, it's from our partner Book Lion, so you can you. choose the book for you. Maybe it's in Ukrainian, maybe it's in English, cool. maybe it's in, even in Greek. Cool. So you. please use the certificate. Thank you very much for your stories, for your fun, for your inspiration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.